Hello, welcome back to Chemical Equilibrium, the last and final installment for this series, I think. Um, and I found out how to put a little apple on here. So there it is. Uh, so this uh, is what I call the challenging equilibrium problem. And so um, I found this to be very challenging. So because I found it to be very challenging, I thought it would be a, a good idea to run through it with you, because if you can see how to do one of the most challenging ones, then uh, maybe the ones that are not quite as challenging will uh, you'll be capable of doing. All right, so, um, so let's take a look at this. Um, we have uh, the solid of ammonium carbonate, and at very high temperatures, it decomposes into three gases. And so we've got this set at 400 degrees Celsius, and so at 400 degrees Celsius, we end up with a um, equilibrium, equilibrium constant for partial pressure of 0.295. Um, okay, so so um, the first step is uh, is to just sort of simply write out um, the, um, the the KP expression in this case. So the KP is uh, going to equal the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. But um, we leave out solids and pure liquids. So notice that this uh, reactant side is just all a solid. And so then what happens is that uh, this is the partial pressure squared of NH3 um, times the partial pressure of H2O, and that is multiplied by the partial pressure of uh, CO2. Uh, I wrote that a little bit big. should be partial pressure sub CO2. Um, and, and so this one, of course, is squared because in the balanced equation here, we have a uh, coefficient of 2. All right, so, so that's the uh, partial pressure equilibrium or the equilibrium partial pressure constant expression. Um, now, now, what if uh, the what if we were to say calculate the Kc from that? Well, we know that uh, K Kp uh, from previous uh, d discussions equals Kc times the R constant times the temperature times the change in the number of moles. All right, um, and I'm going to sort of derive this in order to solve for uh, Kc. So if I if I derive this around, uh, I'm going to divide both sides like this. Um, so uh, Kc actually is going to equal Kp divided by Rt uh, to the power of the change in moles of gas. Okay, so um, so we should have everything here to solve for Kc. Uh, so Kc uh, equals, and we find out that our Kp, and and this is at uh, what is so what is the the equilibrium constant expression for concentration at that temperature. So the Kp equals uh, 0.295. So we'll put that on top, and um, the R value. Let's see. Let's pull this down. The R value is 0 0.0821, and because uh, that's for ATMs, and the temperature here we say is 400 degrees. So in this particular equation, we have to use Kelvin, and so then that means that we're looking at 673 degrees Kelvin. All right, and uh, times the change in the number of moles. Uh, so the change in the number of moles, oops, sorry about that, uh, my bad. The change in the number of moles is uh, simple to find. Uh, all you do for the change in the number of moles, and this is specifically of gases, so this right here is change in the number of moles of gases. We went over that in a previous video, but um, so what you do is you, you, you take the, you add up all the number of moles on the product side and you subtract them from the number of moles of gases on the reactant side. So we have two moles of, of uh, ammonia, one mole of water, and one mole of carbon dioxide. So it gives us a total of four moles on this side. And so we got four minus, we have no moles of gas on the reactant side. So four minus zero. So actually our change in the number of moles 
is 4. So we're actually going to take this to the power of 4. And so that translates out to the equilibrium constant expression uh, equaling, let's see, I did this in advance, so it looks like it equals 3.17 times 10 to the negative 8. So there you go. So you're able to solve for a KC. Uh, and we have very little information, so it's going to be kind of neat as we go through this because you can see that uh, with very little um, with very little information, you can really find out a lot. <coughs> All right, so let's look at another an, another thing with this particular thing. Um, what if I was to ask you to calculate the partial pressure of ammonia gas at equilibrium at 400 degrees Celsius? Um, so how do we do that? Well, um, you, you notice here's the KP. We know what that is. We've got our um, our point two nine five. Uh, equals, is so we don't have any values for any of these things, but we can use an ice table in order to figure out um, what each of these value factors would be in order to solve uh, for x, and then use x times 2 in order to solve for the partial pressure of this, because uh, this kp equals this value times this value times this value, and, um, and since they're, they're molar ratios, uh, and, and because they're gases, we should be able to solve uh, for x using an ice table. So here's our ice table. Now, in, just like in your equilibrium concentration expression, you do not include solids. You, not you will not <laughs> include solids in your ice table as well. So uh, we're left with uh, 2NH3 and H2O and CO2. So all we have is products, um, and our initial concentration of our products is, uh, is zero, because um, what we said to begin with was, oh, I, uh, I left out one little bit of information, meant to write that up here. I'll write it in the same color as if it was always up here. So let's say we had 40 grams of um, this initially. So 40 grams of this solid initially to start out with. All right. So uh, here's our change. So our change here, in this case, since these are all products, they're all going to be pluses. So this is going to be plus 2x. This is going to be plus x. And this is going to be plus x. I hope that doesn't mess you up, but I used a different color. It does show up a little bit better. Um, and so... Um, that, that gives us values to insert up here, okay? And so, um, the, so what we have is uh, this one. We have 2x, and uh, in this case, the partial pressure of 2x, uh, like this, was squared, um, and then uh, the other ones weren't. I'm going to rewrite. That doesn't look right. Um, but, uh, but you see that this one was squared from the balanced equation when we put it in here, and it's 2x here, so we have 2x, and it's squared. Um, now, these ones weren't. They were single coefficients, and so uh, they're just going to be x and then times x. So we have 2x squared times x times x. Uh, so 2x squared ends up being 4x squared times x times x actually equals 4 x to the fourth. So 0 0.295 uh, equals 4x to the fourth. So what you're going to do is you're going to divide 0 0.295 by 4. So um, well, let's just do that right down here. So 0 0.295 divided by 4. Um, and then you're going to take that uh, to the power of, um, or actually, you're gonna you're gonna actually take it to the power of uh, one fourth or 0.25, because you want to go to the sub root of the power of four. So the best way to do that in your calculator and how I do it is I just do the caret and then in parentheses uh, one divided by four, and that would give you the value of x. So if you do that in your calculator, you'll find out that x equals uh, 0.521. One. 0.521. So 0 0.521 is X, uh, but we found out that uh, nit or ammonia is actually a 2X value. So 0 0.521 times 2 is going to give us a value 
of uh, 1.04 atm for ammonia. So the partial pressure of ammonia gas in this particular situation equals uh, 1.04 atms. Um, so uh, we did that simply by taking the ice table to figure out the factors that go in these parentheses and then using our equilibrium constant expression for partial pressures uh, to solve for x because we knew what the kp was and once we solve for x we just had to take 2x because in um, in this uh, we have uh, two moles of this to one mole of this to one mole of this so the partial pressure is going to be exactly double these two so in, in this case now we know what the partial pressure of both of both of these are as well because they're just going to be a single unit so they're going to be point uh, five to one 0.521 uh, for each of these. All right, so um, so then that could also lead us to answering another question. We could say, uh, what is the uh, the total pressure inside the, the flask? Well, we found out from the the previous calculations right here that uh, this one was uh, point. Let's see, 1.04 atms. And this one then was going to be point, uh, let's see, I lost it, uh, point 0.521, point 0.521 ATMs. And uh, this one is going to be point 0.521 ATMs as well. All right, so add those all up and we get total pressure because uh, the pressure total is going to equal the addition of all the partial pressures. So. Once we add those all up, we find that the total pressure uh, equals uh, 2.08 atms. So that's the, the total pressure of this particular system, uh, just found by adding those all up. Now, um, what if we were to then ask um, this question? What if we were to ask, after the total pressure question, if we were to ask, um, what is the number of grams of this solid left? If you remember back in this thing, I, I told you that we actually had 40 grams of this initially to start off with. So um, how is it possible to find um, how, ma how many grams of this actually decomposed? Because um, clearly not all of it decomposes. And then how much is left? Um, well, um, one of the easiest ways to do it would be to say, okay, look, I know the pressure of water, and I know the volume. Um, so, um, well, I do know the volume. Uh, the volume is supposed to be three liters. So that was another one of those things that I was supposed to put in here in the beginning. Um, and so, uh, so I know that actually I have I have three liters. And I know the partial pressures of, of each of these products. Um, and I know the temperature. So I know that the temperature is uh, 673 degrees Kelvin. And I know initially had uh, 40 grams to begin with. All right, so, uh, so how am I going to solve this? Well, what I really need to know in order to figure out the amount of mass of this, I need to know the amount of moles. And I'm really close to being able to figure that out. And if I use the equation, here, I'm going to get a different color just for fun. If I use the equation PV equals NRT, which is the ideal gas law equation, I've got number of moles in here. I've got pressure here. I've got volume here, I've got my R constant here, I've got temperature here. So I know all of these factors except for number of moles, which is really what I want to know. Um, and so I could really choose any of these to figure it out, but the most simple logical one would be either CO2 or water, because if we look here, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, molar ratio. So when one, one mole of this will decompose into exactly one mole of this, or exactly one mole of this. So, um, and you'll notice that these partial pressures are the same anyway, so it really wouldn't matter. Um, let's just say for... Um, argument's sake that we're using water, the partial pressure of water. So the partial pressure of water uh, is going to be 0.521 atm. And the reason why we're going to do that again, just to review, is that um, we can use this partial pressure to solve for the number of moles of water. 
And the number of moles of water is going to be the exact number of moles of this that decompose, and that will lead us to be able to solve for the number of grams. So the volume is 3 liters, and uh, that is going to equal a certain number of moles. Oops, pen went wacky. And so we have N, and our R constant is going to be 0 0.0821. And our temperature is going to be 673 degrees Kelvin. All right, so, uh, so this is pretty simple. We can uh, just uh, solve for this if we multiply these together and uh, multiply these together and divide this by the product of that. We end up with N equals 0 0.0283 moles of water. Um, now the moles of water equal the moles of ammonium carbonate that uh, were decomposed. So um, that, uh, th that's an equivalency. So then we could say this. So um, I have exactly 0.0283, uh, oh, that's not a very good three, 0.0283 moles of NH4 2 CO3. Um, and how many grams is that? Well, simple enough to convert uh, from moles to gram. You just have to multiply uh, by the molar mass. And so to figure out the molar mass, I just have to add up uh, two nitrogens, eight hydrogens, one carbon, and three oxygens. I uh, add those all up, and I end up with 96 grams per mole. So um, if I multiply my 0 0.0283 by 96 grams per mole, I'm going to end up with exactly 2.72 grams of the solid is what decomposed. Um, and so if my question was how much do I have remaining, I started with 40. So I'm simply, simply going to say 40 grams minus 2.72 equals... 37.3 grams uh, remaining at equilibrium. So this is a challenging problem, but it pulls because it pulls in the gas laws, it uh, pulls in your ice table, it pulls in your equilibrium constant expression for partial pressures, it pulls in balancing equations, it pulls in stoichiometry. Um, it just about does everything. And also your conversion from uh, partial pressure constant to a concentration constant. And uh, let's see, what else? Oh, and your um, Dalton's law of partial pressures is here as well. So uh, this, this equation right here, this particular problem, seems to have the whole gamut of uh, what you've probably learned in chemistry. And so it's a good one for practice because uh, we didn't really leave much out. And, uh, and also, I was able to put an apple right there. All right, so I hope that you uh, enjoyed this and you learned something.